equation when given two points. Um, so we're going to get this into slope-intercept form and standard form. I want to see those two um, as our final answers here. So first thing we need um, for slope-intercept form, or really what we need for any of these forms, is the slope. If we're given two points, we don't know the slope. So our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, here's our x1, y1, x2, y2 points. So y2 minus y1 is a negative 1 minus the negative 3 becomes a plus 3 over 2 minus a negative 2 becomes plus 2. And we end up with 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. So we found our slope. Um, once you have your slope, you want to take your slope and one of your points, I'll just go ahead and use this point, now we're going to use a slope and a point for a point-slope form. Point-slope form, this is the only thing you can do when you have a point as a, and a slope is put into point-slope form. So y minus y1 equals your slope times x minus x1. Um, and we're just going to plug in our slope and our x1 and y1 values. So this is going to look like y minus a negative 3 becomes plus 3 equals our slope of 1 half times x minus a negative 2, so that becomes plus 2. So now we have the equation in point-slope form. Now I had mentioned that we want this in slope-intercept form and standard form for our two final answers. So to get this to slope-intercept form, we're going to solve for the y. We'll start by distributing this 1 half. So we have y plus 3 equals 1 half x plus 1 half times 2 is 1. Last step, subtract 3 from both sides, and we have y equals 1 half x minus 2. So there's one of our answers. That is slope-intercept form. Now I mentioned we're going to go ahead and get this into standard form also. Um, standard form is your ax plus by equals c. Um, so we're going to take our slope-intercept form. Right now our equation looks like y equals 1 half x minus 2. And we want to have the x's and the y's on the same side. So we'll go ahead and subtract 1 half x from both sides. So we have a negative 1 half x plus y equals negative 2. So there's two things we have to check for now that we are working in standard form. We want to see, do we have any fractions? And we do. We have the fraction of that negative 1 half. We're going to have to fix that. The other thing to look for is that a value must be positive. And our a value is negative. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this um, in one step. We could do it separately. Um, but here's what this will look like if you want to... Um, kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Um, whatever our denominator is, we want to multiply by that value. So we're going to multiply by a 2. But because I want this to be a positive a value, I'm going to multiply by a negative 2. What happens when we multiply by a negative 2 is you get negative 2 times a negative 1 half. And that negative times the negative, that's what makes it positive. And then the 2 times the 1 half is just 1, or just x. So now I got rid of the fraction and that a value, which is a 1, is positive. Then we do negative 2 times y, and negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So here's our standard form with no fractions and a positive a value.